let's do this. Um, I'm really sorry about this top. It's not really the greatest for, I just lost track of time there, sorry. So pretty. Um, it's from Boulevard Boutique, by the way, if you wanted to get this, it's so, so pretty. Um, I'm thinking of doing a little try on haul from there. There. Oh, I am not concentrated today. I don't know what's going on. Okay, I promise I will be better. Two seconds, I need a pillow. Okay, there we go. My apartment isn't really the greatest for filming YouTube videos because I only have one massive door. And it looks into um, my apartment and it just, it's not very aesthetic. So I'm sorry about that. Cause I know most YouTubers have like the most aesthetic places to film their videos, but not me. So let's get started with today's video. I asked you guys on my Instagram, which video you wanted me to do the pregnancy shoot or how I got into modeling. <laughs> Some of you were a bit shocked, but you can find out tomorrow if I'm pregnant or not. We'll have to see. Um, so let's get started. So you guys asked me a few questions about how I got into modeling industry and how you should get into it and a few other questions. I'm just going to start off with how I got into the modeling industry and show you my story along the way and my mistakes and successes and all the good and the bad all together in one tiny little video. I've just changed position on, oh, hold on. I just changed position on filming because that was a really uncomfortable position. I'm gonna leave it at this. I'm really sorry about the shitty background. When I move to Joburg, hopefully I'll have like a whole new apartment that I can play with and make a nice little section just for my YouTube, so. Let's just hope. Sorry, I know I touch my boobs a lot. Why did I do that? So how did I get into modeling? Basically, when I was growing up, I was always like this tall, super skinny girl and everyone was always like, oh, are you a model? Are you a model? Are you a model? But to be honest, I didn't have the confidence when I was younger. I was honestly the most insecure person up until about grade I would say grade 12, like matric, literally. I was so insecure. Um, all my friends were like, oh, you're so beautiful, you have the best body, and I'll show you some photos of what I look like over here and over here. But I just couldn't believe them. I just, it just didn't come naturally to me to have that confidence where I was like, yeah, I have a good body, and like, I have beautiful hair, and I've got a model face, and like, I, I just, I did not grow up feeling pretty at all. But I think in a way that's kind of helped me because now I'm, I'm still very down to earth and accepting of people. And I think with some models, they've always known that they're beautiful. And I feel like it's really hard to find models that are still down to earth, but confident, but don't rate themselves like they're some fucking supermodel. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. That's my opinion, but other people might say otherwise. In matric, I, I was always interested in photography and I always was quite, I was that girl that always took selfies and like, even though I wasn't confident, maybe I was trying to prove something to myself, I don't know, but I was always that girl taking selfies and, um, you know, I always had like Instagram as soon as it came out, Facebook as soon as it came out, I was obsessed with social media. Not that that really matters, but it kind of does because social media is such an important part of our job and yeah so I kind of was just always interested in it and when people kept saying like you should be a model are you a model um you know I always was just like no 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 and then eventually one day I was like maybe I should be then I met my ex-boyfriend who was a model a note to all you girls out there don't date a model because they are more obsessed with their looks than you are <laughs> um Okay, I'm just joking. Okay, I'm not really, but never mind. So he was a model and he put me into contact with a photographer that he had shot with before. And his name was Ferdinand van Hazen. 
and he was honestly I say he was because he sadly passed away about two years ago but he was honestly like my mentor he literally was the easiest person to shoot with it was my first shoot ever I'll show you some photos all over here um, it was my first shoot ever and I was so scared and I had no idea what I was doing um, Anyway, so I did my first photo shoot with him and he put me into contact with an agency. So that is one way you can get into modeling. The second way you get into modeling is you can submit an online application. This is kind of like a, you know, one in a hundred chance I find. I've even submitted applications before and I didn't get through. So that's not to say that you can never be a model if they don't accept you because sometimes they just overlook them so quickly and they don't actually really take it in. Um, I submitted an application to so many agencies before I did that shoot and I didn't get in. I just never heard back and I was like, maybe I'm not a model. Like maybe I shouldn't do this whole modeling thing, you know? Um, in a way, when I look back, I wish I started it in high school because I probably would have gotten a lot further in my career, but you can't look back, right? Like you can't go back and be like, oh, I wish, but yeah. So sending in an online application that normally consists of you taking Polaroids. Polaroids are basically very natural photos of your face and body. Um, if you don't know what kind of Polaroids, it's always like your face, uh, half body, side, so profile, and then full body. And you have to put in all your measurements, your age, sometimes they have boxes for like special notes. I would recommend putting in a little special note about how you really want to be a model and how you want to be a part of the agency and why. It just makes you stand out a lot more. So that is the second way. The third way is to be scouted. Uh, there's a lot of Instagram accounts that you can actually tag on your photos that can scout you. Um, it just makes the process even quicker. Although being scouted, like you really have to have a unique look to be scouted because it's hard, but it's not impossible like most of the modeling industry. So that goes for females and males. So step one is do a photo shoot, get into contact with photographers. It's even good to do that because then you can actually see for yourself if you're gonna like it or not. Some people say they wanna be a model, but then when they actually do it, they hate it. So it's very different someone taking a photo of you compared to you taking photos of yourself. Um, also, you know, when you do jobs, you, you could have like 10 to 20 people looking at you while you're shooting and you have to nail those shots because you want to get booked again. So it is very different to just doing normal photo shoots with yourself or with your iPhone or whatever. Um, so yeah, so photo shoot, online application and scouting. That is three best ways that I can say of how you should get into modeling. The average lifespan of a model is about, they say that you should stop modeling, like you start to get old in the industry at 23. Um, but I rate you can go up until you're like 29, 30. I think 30 is where you cut the line of like you're an old model and you have to start doing things that aren't necessarily what you maybe would want to do, like the shoots you normally see. People always want young and fresh faces, so you get old really quickly. So I am 175 centimeters tall. I'm actually kind of a short model. Um, there are like a few models that are shorter than me, but especially in South Africa, but I'm actually considered quite short as a model, especially if I had to go overseas. Um, so I'm like 175 centimeters, so that's like 5'10", 5'11"-ish, I think it's more 5'10". Is it mandatory to have Patreon? No, it's not. Um, I know a lot of models do because it can make you money. Um, but no, it's not mandatory. Are there any charges to being with an agency? So they do charge you for Z cards. Let me show you one. This is a Z card. It's basically like your, I explained this in my 
uh, the video that I did for vlog for castings, I will put that link down below too. Um, this is a Z card. It basically shows your measurements, your name, your height, um, what agency you're with, your Instagram. And that is basically to, where is it going with this? Oh, any charges. Um, so you get charged for these. I think it's like 15 Rand per Z card, but they don't charge you straight away. It comes off the jobs that you do. So if I book a job, like for example, I have a job tomorrow. Um, my cost of my Z cards will come off of that. Um, yeah, that's about the only charge they have really. So you don't need to worry about, like when you join an agency, it's, it's free basically, but they do take 40% of 30 to 40% of your income that you make on jobs because they have to make money somehow and they are finding you the work so that's basically their payment for finding you work okay this one i say for last because it's more of a personal question but do agents bookers or photographers hit on the models yes they do not everyone um there are some agencies that are more unprofessional than most um the same goes for photographers and stuff i would say photographers are probably the worst but if you work with a photographer and he hits on you that just shows he's not professional so you have to watch out for that and all the stories you hear are true most of the time um it does happen in the industry because it is a creative industry and everyone is so close together and like, you know, for example, if you're doing a bikini shoot or an implied nudity shoot, that is going, it's hard not to hit on the girl, I guess, if you're a guy, not that that's an excuse for it. I think like a lot of photographers, they'll compliment you while you're shooting because they want you to feel comfortable in your own skill to get the best shots. So maybe sometimes people mistake that as flirting but you just gotta know the boundary, you gotta know the line and you know if you do a shoot with a photographer and you're uncomfortable when the images come out or you had an unpleasant experience, you just don't shoot with them again and you make sure that other models know to not shoot with them and that happens a lot in the industry. That's why your name in this industry is so important because it really does judge whether you get jobs or not. But anyways, I hope this helps all of you and it's been fun chatting to you guys and I will see you tomorrow to shoot the next video. By the way, I am going to start scheduling well, like a video schedule. So I'll post like two videos a week. Um, I'm still deciding on the days of which is best, but that's coming soon and I'll see you tomorrow.